Let's pause for a moment in our discussion of natural and step responses of RC circuits and look a little more closely at this time constant tau. You'll recall that um, in both of the examples, both the natural and the step response, we ended up with, or our expression relating voltage over time, involved this differential term dvdt, and that it was equal to negative 1 over rc times v. At least it had those components to it. And in the natural response, we went on and found that for an initial voltage of v naught, the voltage across the capacitor was v naught e to the minus t over tau. Now, let's take just a second and review some calculus. Let's look at this expression as it relates to this and see that the graph of this does in fact correlate with the differential equation that describes it. It is better. So what I have here is I have plotted v naught e to the minus t over tau where v naught equals 1. So along this axis here, that's the time axis, along this axis here is v of t. What this differential relationship is saying is that the larger v is, the more rapidly it's changing, and the change in this case because of the minus sign is that it is decreasing. The derivative is negative. So for large v, we'll have a large and decreasing voltage. The slope, which is the derivative, at that point is negative and it's relatively large. As V gets smaller, the derivative continues to be negative but becomes less and less. The slope is becoming less and less as V gets smaller. So in fact, as we, as we knew it had to, this relationship here, or this expression, satisfies graphically also our understanding of what this differential expression is, is describing. Now, let's look at the effect of this value tau. It's the time constant. Tau has the units of seconds. It's a measure of how quickly the circuit responds. To understand that, let's evaluate e to the minus t over tau for values of t equaling 1 tau, 2 tau, 3 tau, and 4 tau. So at t equals tau, we will have e to the minus tau over tau. That's e to the minus 1. If you get out your calculator, you'll see that e to the minus 1 is approximately, well, it's equal to this, which is approximately 0.37. So our function up here, v at 1 tau, is equal to, approximately equal to, again, we're going to round that off to 0 0.37, 0 0.37 v naught. So within one time constant, there's 0 0.37. That line there corresponds to a tau, or t rather, equaling 1 tau. The value of the voltage across the capacitor has decayed down to only 37% of its original value. Or to put it another way, in the first one time constant, this circuit has lost, what is that, 93, or eight, uh, no, 63. It's lost 63% of its original value. Or we could also say, in the case of the step response, that we have gone 63% of the distance to our final value. Now let t equal 2 tau. e to the minus 2 tau over tau is e to the minus 2. Get out your calculators again, and e to the minus 2 is approximately equal to 0 0.1353, or let's round that off to 0.14. So at t equals 2 tau, v of 2 tau will equal, again, just rounding out to about 0.14 v naught. This line here, it's about 0.14. That corresponds to t equaling 2 tau. At 2 tau, then, we have dropped down to only 14% of our original value, or we've then dropped 86%. Similarly, at 3 tau, e to the minus 3, we're now down to about 5%. 
v of 3 tau is approximately equal to 0.05 or 5% of its original value, which means that we've gone 95% of the way to our final within three co time constants. Finally, t equals 4 tau. We'll have e to the minus 4. e to the minus 4 is approximately 0 0.02. So the voltage across that capacitor after four time constants, it has died out to about 2% of its original value, or we've gone 98% to our new value. When talking about the rate of response of a circuit, we frequently will talk in terms of tau, well, within two time constants, within four time constants. Of course, the time constant depends upon the circuit. Tau, we have seen, for an RC circuit, tau is equal to r times c. How does that relate to our circuit here? Capacitor and a resistor. The bigger r is, the longer tau is. That makes sense. The bigger the resistor is, the longer it takes for this capacitor to discharge. And similarly, the larger C is, the greater tau is. Well, that makes sense. The bigger the capacitor is, the more charge it can hold, the longer it's going to take for that charge to dissipate. Let's see if we can put some feeling onto this, some intuition on this. Let's just say that R times C equals 5 seconds. Well, that means that after one second, the circuit will have lost 63% of its voltage. After two after two time constants, which would be 2 times 5, or 10 seconds, the voltage on the capacitor will have dropped 86% of its voltage. After 3 times tau, where tau is 5 seconds, after 15 seconds, that capacitor voltage would have dropped down to about 5% of its original. So in this case, where tau is 5, the circuit is responding on the order of seconds. 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. After 20 seconds, we could say that the voltage is down to less than 2% of its original value. On the other hand, if the time constant R times C equals 5 microseconds, now everything is happening at a much quicker, on a much quicker scale. After 5 microseconds, we're down 63%. After 10 microseconds, we're down 86%. After 15 microseconds, we're down 95%. Thus, knowing just the tau, we have a feel for how quickly the circuit is responding. It could be a quickly responding circuit with a small tau, or it can be a very slow, long, slowly responding circuit with a large tau.